On this week's episode, we're back with a great baseball story, sharing with you the life, family, baseball career, and memorabilia of the legend, Hammerin' Hank Aaron. So grab some popcorn or peanuts, maybe even a dog or two, and join us for a few innings of history and relics. Henry Lewis Aaron, nicknamed Hammer or Hammer and Hank, was born in Mobile, Alabama on February 5, 1934, and was the third of Herbert and Estella Aaron's eight children. Aaron took an early interest in sports. Although the family had little money and he took several jobs to try to help out, he spent a lot of time playing baseball at a neighborhood park. Lacking interest in school because he believed he would make it big as a ball player, Aaron transferred to Allen Institute in his junior year, since they had an organized baseball program. After graduating high school, Aaron played on local amateur and semi-pro teams, such as the Pritchard Athletics and the Mobile Black Bears, where he began to make a name for himself. At about this same time, Jackie Robinson of the Brooklyn Dodgers was breaking the baseball color barrier by becoming the first African-American player in the major leagues. At age 17, Aaron gained immediate success as a hard-hitting infielder. In 1951, the owner of the Indianapolis Clowns, part of the Professional Negro American League, signed him as a Clowns shortstop for the 1952 season. Being almost entirely self-taught, Aaron batted cross-handed in his early years, primarily because, well, nobody told him not to. Still, Aaron's sensational hitting with the Clowns prompted a Boston Brave scout to purchase his contract in 1952. Assigned to Eau Claire, Wisconsin in the minor Northern League, where coaching corrected his batting style, Aaron batted 336 and won the league's Rookie of the Year award. The following year, he was assigned to the Braves' Jacksonville, Florida team in the South Atlantic Sally League. Even while enduring the taunting of fans and racial insults from fellow players in the segregated South, he went on to bat 362 with 22 homers and 125 RBIs. He was named the league's most valuable player in 1953. During winter ball in Puerto Rico in 1953 and 1954, Aaron began playing positions in the outfield. In the spring of 1954, he trained with the Major League Milwaukee Braves and won a starting position when the regular right fielder suffered an injury. Although Aaron was sidelined late in the season with a broken ankle, he batted 280 as a rookie that year, sporting uniform number 5, which was later changed to the more well-known 44. And if you own Hank Aaron's 1954 Topps rookie card, consider yourself very lucky, especially if it's in great condition like the specimen shown here, as it could be worth thousands of dollars today. Hank's younger brother, Tommy, later met up with him when he debuted with the Braves in 1962 as an outfielder. Tommy, wearing jersey number 28, hit for a 231 batting average and belted eight homers in his rookie season. Hank and Tommy were teammates for seven seasons and were the first siblings to appear in a league championship series as such. Here's Tommy's rookie era game used jersey from 1962 to 1965. This flannel shows the Braves name across the chest with his initial jersey number 28 offset below and you can see the portion of the Screaming Brave patch on the left sleeve. The back of the jersey shows his number as well. And check out some of these Topps baseball cards that appears to show this same jersey, although it's not conclusive. We also have two of Tommy's game-used baseball bats with the first dating to his rookie years, 1965 to 1968, while the second dates to the 1973-1975 era 
just after his active playing career and start of his coaching stint. Over the next 22 seasons, this quiet, six-foot, right-handed all-star established himself as one of the most durable and skilled hitters in Major League history. In 14 of those seasons, Aaron played for the Braves and batted 300 or more. In 15 seasons, he hit 30 or more homers, scored 100 or more runs, and drove in 100 or more runs. In his long career, Aaron led all Major League players in RBIs with 2,297. He played in 3,298 games, which ranked him third among players of all time. Aaron twice led the National League in batting and four times led the league in homers. His consistent batting produced a career total of 3,771 hits, again ranking him third all time. When Aaron recorded his 3,000th hit on May 17, 1970, he was the youngest player at age 36 since Ty Cobb to reach that milestone. Aaron played in 24 All-Star games, tying a record. His lifetime batting average was 305, and in two World Series, he batted 364. He also held the record for hitting home runs in three straight National League playoff games, which he accomplished in 1969 against the New York Mets. Although Aaron ranked among baseball's elite, he received less publicity than other players, in part due to his quiet personality. Moreover, playing with the Milwaukee Braves, who became the Atlanta Braves in 1966, denied Aaron the publicity received by major league players in cities like New York and Los Angeles. During Aaron's 23-year career, the Braves only won two National League pennants and one divisional title. The Braves won the World Series, though, in 1957, the year Aaron's 44 home runs helped him win the Most Valuable Player Award. The following year, Milwaukee repeated as National League champions but lost the World Series. Year after year, Aaron ranked among the National League's leading home run hitters. It wasn't until about 1970, however, that sports writers and fans began noticing that Aaron was about to challenge Babe Ruth's record of 714 home runs. By 1972, Aaron's assault on the all-time home run record was big news, and his $200,000 annual salary was the highest in the league. The following year, Aaron hit 40 home runs, falling one short of tying Ruth's mark. Hank Aaron and the Magnavox Company signed a five-year, $1 million endorsement deal in late 1973 that would let Magnavox, for one year, display his bat, ball, and uniform associated with the eventual 715th home run before heading off to the Hall of Fame for display. Also, Magnavox had the right to produce commemorative bats, celebrating the 715th record-breaking homer. These were made by Louisville Slugger with a riveted brass plate attached showing the team, pitcher, date, and serial number that would be given to Magnavox customers that purchased their products during this time period. And we have two bats to show you right here. The first is a rare prototype that shows the brass plate absent any date and opposing team as well as the serial number showing all zeros. Next is an example of the production line, complete with all the information of when Hank got his big homer, number 715. April 4th of 1974 is when Aaron hit number 714 in Cincinnati, Ohio, tying Babe Ruth. Then, on the night of April 8th, 1974, before a large crowd in Atlanta, Georgia, and with a national television audience looking on, Aaron hit his 715th home run off of Dodgers pitcher Al Downing, breaking Babe Ruth's home run record. It was the highlight of Aaron's career, although it was tempered by a growing number of death threats and racist letters that made Aaron fear for his family's safety. After the 1974 season, Hank Aaron left the Braves and went to play for the Milwaukee Brewers until his retirement in 1976. At the time of his retirement, the 42-year-old veteran had raised his all-time home run output to 755. Combined with his brother Tommy's 13 homers from his major league career, the two still hold the major league record for the most career home runs by two brothers at 768. And speaking of the one tool that makes a home run a home run, 
Here's one of Hank's last bats. This is a 1975 Louisville Slugger that has never actually been used, but is game ready and inclusive of Hank's uniform number 44 being placed on the knob. Hank later signed this and it's all been authenticated by John Tobby of PSA DNA Authentication Services for the bat and Major League Baseball for the autograph. A terrific relic to say the least, to go along with those that we have of his brother, Tommy. When Aaron left the Brewers, he became a vice president and director of player development for the Braves, where he scouted new team prospects and oversaw the coaching of minor leaguers. He later went on to become a senior vice president for the Braves. Overall, his efforts contributed towards making the Braves one of the strongest teams in the National League. In 1982, Aaron was voted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York on his first ballot with 97.8% of the votes. However, just two years later, on August 16, 1984, Hank lost his younger brother and former teammate, Tommy, to leukemia at the age of 45. Tommy was buried at the Catholic Cemetery in Mobile, Alabama. Hank Aaron has achieved many great and notable honors and distinctions over the years. In 1997, Hank Aaron Stadium in Mobile, Alabama was dedicated to him and is also where you'll currently find his boyhood home, just inside the stadium gates. In 1999, Major League Baseball introduced the Hank Aaron Award to recognize the top offensive players in each league. In January 2001, Aaron was presented with the Presidential Citizens Medal by President Bill Clinton. He then received the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the nation's highest civilian honor, from President George W. Bush in June 2002. Hank passed away at the age of 86 on January 22, 2021, leaving behind his second wife, Billy, whom he married in 1973. The couple had one child together. Aaron was previously married to Barbara Lucas in 1953, but later divorced in 1971. They had five children while together. Hank is buried at Southview Cemetery, which is about 15 minutes from downtown Atlanta, and is the oldest African-American cemetery in Atlanta, founded in 1886. It has also served as the burial place for many leaders in the civil rights movement, including Martin Luther King Jr., before being moved in 1977 to the King National Historic Park in downtown Atlanta. Also here are Martin Luther King Jr.'s parents, King Sr. and Mother Alberta, who are just two sites down from Hank Aaron. Other notables are former U.S. Congressman and Civil Rights Leader John Lewis, Basketball Hall of Famer and Gold Medal Olympian Walt Bellamy, as well as William Franklin Guest, who was a member of Gladys Knight and the Pips, who had the 1973 hit Midnight Train to Georgia, among others. Well, Hank has some pretty great company at Southview Cemetery, but from the words written on his crypt, says it all. I am not concerned about how I am perceived as a baseball player. I am concerned about how I am thought of as a human being. One of Major League Baseball's greatest. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed our program. If you like our content, we ask that you give us a thumbs up, a like, share with your friends, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell so you always know when our new content is published. And all of this costs nothing, but means a lot to us and keeps us growing. You may also leave us a tip if you choose. The address is provided here on your screen, and a link is provided in the description area below. So until next time, everyone, this one is history. Hey, and be sure to check out our eBay store under ID History and Relics. We're now featuring channel merchandise, starting with our new logo magnet. They're only $5.50, and net proceeds go towards supporting our channel.